Call of Duty betas are one of the largest public software tests that occur on a yearly basis. And while the game this year isn't super in, I found that the software backbone of this title is performing well and scales with different resolutions and settings. Let's take a look at the Black Ops 7 beta on a 3080 system and see what's worth adjusting on your machine at home. Before we dig into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. This content piece was made possible by a viewer and friend MJ, who shipped me this, another card, and a 4770 so I could create content using them. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any social media platforms for me to plug, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to thank MJ in the comments. I also want to say that this beta is a really narrow vertical slice that's subject to change. And as such, I'm going to try and keep things general so this video remains relevant for longer. With that out of the way, let's dive into a small explanation as to what the rest of the system looks like. Paired with the RTX 3080 Founders Edition, we've got an i7-14700K with only the P-Cores enabled, to get the most gaming performance from the CPU. Paired with the 14700K is 64 gigs of 3600 mega transfers per second DDR4, with the Western Digital Black SN770 feeding everything. A full spec list is in the description should you wish to replicate anything you see in this video, and I encourage you to so that you can verify these numbers for yourself. Starting off with general performance trends and upscalers worth using, I found that FSR1 provided the highest performance levels at all settings and resolutions, which might be to be expected considering it's the least computationally intensive option along with the NVIDIA image scaler. On an NVIDIA card that's 20 series or newer, DLSS is probably the default choice, though there are now two branches you can choose from. CNN mode standing for Convolutional Neural Network, and Transformer mode, which utilizes transformer math to accomplish the same thing with less ghosting of objects. In real-world testing scenarios, the lack of ghosting at lower DLSS settings is definitely noticeable, but I never thought that it was too enormous of an issue on COD titles at higher presets. The performance that you see also scales with the pixel count you're putting into the algorithm, meaning that you see a between 6 and 7% performance degradation at 1080 and 1440p, but get a much larger, almost 12% performance hit with the transformer mode. The 40 and 50 series cards have much stronger performance on the transformer mode, so if you have one of those cards, keep that in mind, and more so if you don't have one of those cards, just utilize the neural network code path. In terms of scaling between settings, the jump from the ultra preset down to the more competitive minimum preset saw the 1080p average jump by 32%, 1440p jump by 62%, weirdly, hinting at a CPU bottleneck at 1080p, and then another large 68% performance improvement on average at 4K. If you're on a 1080p display, then lowering the settings doesn't help as much as you're more likely to be CPU limited, but once you start to turn the resolution up, things improve significantly. Additionally, I think it's important to mention that this has been on the Zombies mode so far, and the multiplayer actually performs much better. However, performing similar tests in the multiplayer mode gets smaller percentage gains by lowering the settings. At 1080p, the average only improves by just under 22%, while the same test garnered an under 35% improvement at 1440p on average. 4K seemed to also have similar gains to 1440p, coming in at just under 35%. Zombies seem to scale down better with settings, but multiplayer, given it's a smaller, more focused mode, 
probably has less overhead to begin with, making a drop in settings less profitable in terms of your final frame rate. I think in general, Black Ops 7 performs about on par with last year's Black Ops 6, but has some additional requirements on top of what you'd need to play the older title. First TPM 2.0 and Secure Boot are required in order to even launch the executable. If you're on a motherboard built since 2019, you probably have this already, and you just need to enable it in your BIOS. There are plenty of other folks out there who have videos on turning this on, because in my experience, I ended up needing to update my BIOS in order for the game to even recognize Secure Boot. In terms of performance, you'd be more than ready to tackle Black Ops 7 on any 30 series system. And although this video is limited to testing on a 3080, I think a lot of the takeaways apply generally to most GPUs currently on the market. If you have a DLSS enabled card, then I'd probably just use that, considering it's one of the better quality upscalers, even if it isn't the cheapest in terms of performance overhead. On older cards that don't support DLSS and struggle with ZSS and FSR 3, the game offers the ability to utilize FSR 1, and although it looks really grainy, it performs by far the best, running into CPU bottlenecks a lot of the time at lower resolutions. However, if you have an Intel card, then ZSS is definitely worth checking out, considering it has a very similar level of quality as DLSS and performs similarly on Intel cards in my very limited experience.